really inside of you. Something that you, if only you can understand how God is revealing what is going to happen in your life or in the community as far as God's name is concerned. But what I mean to say, you know and you know that you are no longer stuck to what had happened last year, but something that surprised you in me that is going to happen this year. You know it. And then you can feel it. That's a beautiful song. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, he said, Now that my servant Moses is dead, you must lead my people across the Jordan River into the land I'm giving them. I promise you, I want you to take note of verse 3, I promise you what I promise Moses, everywhere you go, you will be on the a land I have given you. I want you to hear that because it is so huge to, to ponder and try to, to, you know, to dissect the word. The Bible says, everywhere you go, you will be on the land I have given you. From Negev Desert in the south to the Lebanon Mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River on the east to the Mediterranean Sea on the west, in all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand their ground against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not, another very strong word of God, I will not fail nor abandon, or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. Verse 6. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead this people to possess all the land. Take note of the word, possess the land. I swore to their ancestors, I will give them. For the second time, be strong. And then we add the word, be or very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not negate from them. Now, single eye. Turn you either to the right or to the left, then you will be successful in everything you do. He started this book in an obstruction to the temple, meditated day and night, so you will be sure to obey is a human responsibility. Be sure to obey everything with them, amen. Only then you will prosper. And then you can see the next word, succeed in all you do. Success is right there. Prescribe, precise. This is my command. For the third time, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In the last verse of that, from the two million people, some of the leaders, they said to Joshua, as we obey Moses, we promise to obey you. Be strong and very courageous. Four times in chapter 1, the word courage for people of God is mentioned. Very strong. It's not there. You can see it in the last verse of chapter 1. I will entitle, I will entitle the message today, Possess Your Promised Land. Possess. Possess Your Promised Land. Now, entering and possess the Promised Land is the plan of God for His people, Israel. It was given by the Lord to the ancestors of Joshua and Moses, even to Abraham. As far as you can see, the stars in heaven, as far as you can see, the sons of the sea. So your people will be as huge as that, or be in number as that. You cannot number them. And I'll bring you into the land. That was the promise of God. Now, in the context of Joshua, we are reminded that Moses, the leader of Israel, they were there in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, it's the time of the new leader, mentored, taught by Moses for 40 years. The original, just two of them, Moses and Joshua, 
Moses has to die at Mount Nebo, overlooking just the promised land, and just two from the ori original, shall we say, two and a half million people, they all die in the wilderness because of unbelief and warmly complaining. Two people from the original in 20 under were preparing to enter the promised land. From the original, it was only Joshua and Caleb who will possess the promised land. If you try to visualize, it's not that easy. 99% will die in the wilderness they did from, they didn't experience the promised land. And so that is basically God is giving us a hand. It is for sure it's given to them. But the human element, as I'll be touching today, get into the person and they fail the test. Many of them die without seeing the promise, and many of them, God killed them in the wilderness. Wow. Oh, I will go on the blessing of God. So, the way to, to heaven is very narrow, and very, very few will find it. Even Christian today, you know, it's not, um, they're just taking for granted what Christian is all about. It will not go in the, in the side, it will go to what the promise of God. Now, here we can see Joshua leading to many the people. Okay, people to their intended destiny. It was given already. That's why Moses is still promised now. Now they're getting ready with a new generation, Joshua, with new leadership. Then they must cross the Jordan River and then reach their land. Reach their land that has already given to them. It is the heaven. Work for that, they have planted everything that was there was given to them. I wanted to take note of this and before we go to the second first and second points for the brief kind of <coughs> remembering the, the study study. It's not that easy to bring the two million people to the promised land. It's not that easy. But listen, listen to the word of this man and listen to the hymn. But by faith they can do it. Our 2019 that is already given to us, it is already given. But by faith, you will attain what was given already to you. It is a matter of Guy, Derek, Eduardo, and Ramon, and Paul, all of us, I have given to you. So you have to do it by faith. The word by faith is not mental faith. It is faith originated from God to your heart and is followed with an action word. That's faith. It's not the faith. Oh, let's go ahead to the study. Okay, so the study this afternoon will open up our eyes to understand each one of us can and will have their promised land to enjoy in 2019. Let's enjoy that in 2019. Number one, the last Sunday that I mentioned to you, reach out to possess the promised land. Reach out. There is an action word I am giving to you, but I have done my part. I will sustain you. I will strengthen you. I will, be, I will never abandon you. Wherever you go, in the Bible says, everywhere you go, you will be in the land I have given you. You can see it in verse 3. I promise you what I promised Moses, wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. Right there you can see and you can hear from the Lord the promise, promise that was given to Moses, now given to Joshua, and Joshua made it real. And they experienced the promised land, they did it in the promised land with his people. Yes. Those places have been reclaimed. Take note of the word. They got it. And the fatness of the land, they all enjoyed the nation of Israel. They enjoyed the fatness of the land. Now the promise of God to take possession in all the land need an action and need our faith. It is an action that materialized and fulfilled what had been given to Moses realized in the life of Joshua in the people, two million people of Israel. Now what happened here is when they got to the land, they enjoyed the 185,000 square kilometers of land that's huge and big. And they were 
enjoying this so much for them to enjoy, but in reality, God had promised to them 621,597 square kilometers of land. It will continue to enlarge as they want to. When they got the 185,000 square kilometers or 24,000 square miles, they enjoyed already. But in reality, God is revealing to them what I have made for you is to enjoy the only deposit, but the influence of my blessing as I promised to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and now to Moses, and things like this, is for you to enjoy. You know what? God is revealing, He is so generous to God's people who are faithful to Him. Yeah. You know that from time to time, we have experienced, it's more experience, God answering our prayer. Other times, we are already contented. But the promise of God to all of us is should be for His desire to you and to me and to our church is to bless us and to make us a blessing to many. Yeah. That's the reason. Yes. To be, it's not for us. To be a blessing to the nation of Australia. Yes, yes. That's the huge plan of God. We have so many trials in 2016. And some of you may be what's happening to maybe in 2017. You can look back to just, just two years ago. And maybe 2018 it's become a little bit better. I don't know, or earlier than that. And you have tough challenges that happen to you, or situations in life that it seems you are going nowhere. It happens. And God is not condemning, and God is not a vindictive God, never in the history of the man who is loving and compassion. You probably once in the wilderness in your life, maybe 10 years ago, maybe 5 years ago, maybe 3 years ago. But I want you to hear, and since the thing that you've been praying, it was nothing him or any kind of sign of God. What's happening? Are you dead, God? Is the door closed? I want you to hear the things that happened to you 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 3 years ago, is not final. Well, it is not final. You are not destined to be straight or to reduce to nothing. It was never the plan of God. The promise of blessing your life is going to God take so that Christ will be magnified on earth by blessing you is spiritually, physically, influence, joy, power, authority when it is given to you. The surrounding community, right, yes. nations will be blessed with one man can chase a thousand, two men can chase a thousand. That is the power of God. Yes. So use that you will become a blessing as I bless you. Yes, Lord. Yes. You know what? Let's reprogram our mind. In defining your life, not in the failures in lack. Don't define your life. Don't always like this. Please, don't define your life in the lack or the failure in your sake or the shortage of many things in your life. But the final life, as thy Joshua, in the living promises of the word of God to you, I promise you, God says, you will be in the land I have given you. So the land where you stay, wherever city you stay, God say, claim that land, I will make you a blessing, I will be with you, I will sustain you, you will become a message to the people, to the community. Rise up in your faith and believe, yes. and then declare the word of God to you, to your family, and to your life. And from there, you will experience the power of God in your life. Another thing that we studied last Sunday is the number to the uncontested promise of God, irrefutable. Undebatable is a verse 5. Let me verse 5. Go down. I will not fail or abandon you. That's very strong. I will not fail or abandon you. 
build and get the business of the boy. I will not fail or abandon, or abandon you. Uncontested promise of God. I will not fail. It is a statement to move on without defeat. That's the word. This is the time the enemy made so many lies to you, but God is saying, I will not fail you, I will not abandon you. My statement to you is move on. You will not be defeated, but always experience the victory. That's how important is the word of God. Not by feeling, not by seeing, not by observation, not the lack, what is lacking, not the little word that you have to know. God said, I will be with you, and then I will not fail you, I will not abandon you. It's always victory. Alexander the Great. When Alexander the Great saw the breath, all the expanse of his domain, all places he conquered, he went. For there were no more worlds to conquer. Now he is the great ruler in my history of Macedon. And he is the creator of an empire of Greece, Persia, and Egypt, and many regions beyond. He was undefeated. We are talking about conqueror, earthly conqueror. He was undefeated in battle. It is, con it is considered one of the most notable military commanders in history. That's Alexander the Great. The Great the last regime. God is giving us the word more than Alexander the Great. Uncontested, and un uncontested promise of victory is given to you. You are no longer hiding in one place no more. You know, it's enough. You can say, rise up. Yes. The Bible says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God is unveiling something from the word of God. It's no longer to cry tears and put yourself in sackcloth and uh, discontented and discouragement and quitting and lightness and illness going around and around. There is no end of suffering, no more. In the world, the cultures of the world, the things that, the, you know, the characteristics of the world. You have tribulation, but in me, you have peace. Be, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So you can see here, God is giving us a word. I want you to be happy. I want you to rejoice. I want you to exalt, be happy, be joyful, dance with joy. Because there is a guarantee. I paid it all. I was the mediator between God and man. I become a victim sitting at the right hand of the Father. So I can understand you whenever you cry for your need. I am beside the Father. I will I will negate you, which means you can live victoriously because Jesus became a victim, so you and I become a victor. Yes. We're well, victorious. Yes. Oh, wow. And he goes on to say, God said, I want to say, how big is the word of God? Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance in the ends of the earth. Your possession, Psalms chapter 2 verse 8. In other words, as of me, in the whole earth, it's no longer Australia, that is the vast coverage of the influence of the people of God. When God promised them, I'll be with you every place that your foot has trod upon, as you claim in faith and believe, I will reject, I will manifest my glory, and people will bow down to me because you are. My servant is a by the Lord to the world that I am alive and the God of the heavens and the earth. Yes. Who is your enemy or enemies? No job? No. No money? Money is just a stand up in our bank account? No, that's not your enemy. Sick body or sick and weak? No. Sound relationship? Oh. My car, I need a new car, or a, a new car, or behind in rent is that the enemy? 
afraid to make a major decision, very afraid and more strict and changed to make a major decision, paralyzed with fear and then insecurity. All you can see are mountains of problems in struggling, surviving to exist day after day. Listen, stand to your ground and declare you are under the command of the Commander-in-Chief, Jesus Christ, then begin to use the sword, the Word of God, yes, yes. and then the faith that will quench the five darts of the enemy, or the enemies, and begin to conquer and then reclaim what truly belongs to you. That's the victory of the believer in the Lord. Listen to this. Begin to declare blessing to yourself. Lord, I am blessed. Lord, you have chosen me. Lord, you have anointed me. You have given me a heart to respond to your heart, O oh God. You have given me uh, the eyes, O Lord, that, uh, oh Lord, that need your eyes, but eyes to see the needs of the world. Mm -hmm. Speak blessing to yourself. Yes, yes. Speak blessing to your family, into your children, not curses. That is being stagnated, the blessing will not flow when you are speaking evil word or curses or bad words to God. Come into yourself, you speak blessing first to yourself and then to your husband and to your wife and to your children and say how God will invert it from nothing to something.